What's going down, my positives? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Super Mario Galaxy, episode number four. Today, we're finally going to be doing the kitchen dome in this game. And of course, you know, this is, I'm just like showing you guys like a little, like every episode, you guys should probably expect me to start off with an amazing view of the Comet Observatory. And I gotta say, I love the Comet Observatory. I don't, I think I've probably said that already, but I really do. It's a very common place, and like, just the music here is it's like the perfect hub. In all honesty, I think they downgraded in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Anyway, yeah, like I said before, we're gonna be doing the kitchen dome. I think this was actually one of the domes that I got stuck on. I mean, I got stuck multiple times when I was playing this game. I mean, that's the reason why it took me an entire year to beat it. But uh, I was definitely stuck in the kitchen, though. Like, I, I definitely was. But, finally after this, I can show you guys one of my favorite galaxies in this game. And it's purely because I like swimming. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. The kitchen dome is also pretty unique because it also has a 1-up mushroom that you can always get from under this. And if you're skilled enough, you can, you know, do a little, you know, a little thing like that. Actually, I'm going to try to do it again. Okay, you can do that. You can, like, fall off, do a little wall jump. Some like that. Yeah, some like this. Yeah, you know, that that's a pretty cool thing to do. Mm. I am also drinking lemonade after eating a carrot. We have discovered an enemy base. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, we just got here, though. <laughs> Yeah, because of the, if you basically have been playing the game like how I have this entire time, see, of course, you know, you need 23 stars to get to Bowser, or in this case, Bowser Jr., because they alternate between every galaxy, uh, every dome. So in one dome, you'll fight Bowser Jr., the other one, you'll fight Bowser. So in this dome, you know, we're going to be, we're going to, anyway, basically... <laughs> Yeah, just play the game that you, like how I've been playing, and you'll be able to get all the stars basically really fast. Anyway, this is Beach Bowl Galaxy, and this galaxy right here is one of my favorite galaxies ever. Look at it. It's literally a bowl of water. Like, that's so cool to me. Like, imagine, like, some planet that's just suspended in space with just water. Oh, I guess that could be... I guess that could be the Earth. <laughs> the, the, the Earth is like a... But then again, you know... Earth is a rocky planet, and we—it's got water on it. This looks, this just looks like water. But then again, there could be rocky. It could be like a rocky terrain, I guess. But this is one of my favorite galaxies because, personally, for me, I love swimming. If I wasn't a, if I wasn't a runner, I'd probably be a swimmer. I just love it so much, and for some reason, I don't know why, but when I was playing this game for the first time. I was obsessed with the idea of going to like a water-based level. I think it was because I read the the Nintendo Primer Primer Guide or something like that, the official guidebook for this game, and I think it said it had like Mario could like swim. And for some reason, that was so cool to me. I mean, it still is because like I mean, you're underwater. It's like I don't know. People don't seem to really like swimming all that much sometimes. But I mean, of course, like I'm not saying like nobody likes swimming. I'm like saying like you know. In terms of video games, you don't really see swimming that much. I've always wanted a video game where, like, you go on, like, a water park ride. It's like, you, 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 like, go to a water park and you ride on, like, rides and, like, you serve. I don't know. It just sounds like a, such a cool concept. If anyone wants to steal that idea, be my guest. I would love to play a game like that. But uh, I, I obviously love this galaxy. I love the fact that you're basically swimming in a giant sink. And it's really cool. The music is awesome. And you know what? I actually have a personal memory. I talked about this, I think, uh, all the way back in, like, part two or part three, I think. Well, I was going to mention something at one point, but then I decided not to because I wanted to save it for this galaxy. Hmm. God, I'm sorry. Pink Lemonade is so good. But um, when I was about... What was I like nine, eight, something like that? When I was younger and I was playing this game, I had like my best friend. His name was Corey, and uh, he used to come over and like to my house or my apartment. And he used to like, you know, watch me play games and stuff like that. I remember one day uh, we were like outside, we were like playing, and uh, Corey and me, we found like this like this bird, like this baby bird. And uh, warning to anybody who's sensitive to like animal stuff. 
This is kind of a messed up story now that I think about it, but there was this baby bird that we saw in a tree and you know, when you when you're a little kid, you know, you try to like, you know, say hi to birds and stuff like that. And uh they they don't, you know, birds don't stick around. They they typically like fly away or whatever. So, you know, what happened was we saw a baby bird in like this like giant bush, all right? And we took like the baby bird because like the mom I think was trying to get us no I don't think the mom was even around I think the baby bird like fell from the bush and uh it uh basically like fell down to like the ground so we picked it up we took it home and I took it home and I was playing this game I was playing Beach Bowl Galaxy I was like yo this galaxy is cool anyway the baby bird though <laughs> so we're like taking care of the baby bird and we thought like we could have it just stay there in our house you can see where this is going we thought we could have it stay in our house in my house for like a day uh but come to find out the baby bird died when we did that actually i'm not sure what exactly happened this is pretty fucked up i think what happened was the bird stopped moving and um <laughs> you know this is this is not funny this is like really most something i really think about it I think it like stopped moving and we try to like give the we try to make the baby bird go back to where it was before but of course uh i think it was dead i'm not exactly sure i think it i think it was still moving but i think it was on imminent death and i'm not sure like if you touch a baby bird and like the mom doesn't find him or something like that, i'm not sure if they like they reject him but uh needless to say that happened i didn't realize how fucked that up that was before i said it but that was one of the memories i had when i played this game Rest in peace to that baby bird. We did it again like two or three more times. Yeah, it's so bad. But one of the times, I think the last time that we did it, I think we didn't even take it to the house. I think we just like let it sit there. I think like it fell down. I think another one fell down from the same exact nest. And it could have been the same exact baby bird, to be honest with you. And it, it fell down. And uh, it's... Uh, I, we just kind of left it there that time. We were like, nah, I don't think we, we should do this anymore. Oh, yeah. You know, those baby birds look like those penguins. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we got a hungry one. I probably should talk about the game again. Rosalina has these things in, the, in this game called her, her, like, her storybook or something like that. Um, whenever you play certain galaxies, you'll unlock more chapters in her storybook. And the storybook is one of, is basically like a huge backstory about Rosalina herself. And, uh, it's basically like her telling like a story to all the Lumas and you only get updated every now and then. And, uh, we're going to basically check that out at the end of this episode. So probably expect at this point from all, for all the future episodes of this series, to have a Rosalina storybook section because that is uh, usually how it goes. Like usually you'll unlock the story chapters after playing a lot of galaxies and stuff like that. So then after, you know, you're done with like a dome, you'll probably be, you know, just visiting the, do uh, the stories. Uh, they're very detailed, like basically autobi- well, not autobiography. They're basically like big biography stories for Rosalina and it's, it's actually pretty sad and it's actually affected me on like an existential level but anyway look at this it's a vine it's a vine that was really fun I'm trying to like completely distract you guys from that very depressing information I just told you this time I was just kind of like trying to like look around and like figure out where like where to go because honestly if there's one thing about this galaxy that i really like it's actually really really fun to explore this is a very fun uh to explore galaxy like just in general and you know what that one up mushroom was really hard for me to get back in the day and i don't know why well besides exploring what you actually have to do is you have to take this gold shell because it's the only shell in this in this level for some reason and you have to ram it into a, a little bit of a, a hole in the wall But it's really fun because, like, honestly, the shells in this game are super fun to control. Because, like, they, they 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 give you better underwater mobility. You can jump really high in the air. 
And again, like I really used to play around in this galaxy a lot. Amazing, I didn't think you'd actually be able to bring it back. Well then, here's a big gold medal for you. Oh wait, never mind. I'm thinking of the wrong galaxy. Never mind. Yeah, all you really do is you take this big gold shell, you give it to the guy, and then he gives you the star. No, I am not a little penguin. I am not one of your students, man. But thank you for the star, though. Anyway. Oh my god. All my pink lemonade is gone. Damn it. But whatever. Anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, that galaxy is just really fun to play around in. I I I, I actually like just there I was kind of starting to like just like just run around. It's really cool just you know, just going around and doing stuff. You know, it kind of reminds me of Super Mario Odyssey, but you know, like, I think I would actually appreciate an open world Mario game. Even though I know Super Mario Odyssey isn't really an open world Mario game, I think it's open enough <clears throat> for me to be very interested in, like, looking around it and stuff. In fact, technically, I guess it is because you could say that's not an open world game, but then look at New Donk City and how you get, like, moons. Man, I've played Super Mario Odyssey and I have not played that game. In about five years, like straight up, I have not touched that game at all because I don't know. Like I was like when I first got my Nintendo Switch, um, I was really addicted to that game. Honestly, I played the shit out of Mario Odyssey. I didn't get all the moons though because holy shit, I've heard that there's a lot of moons, like 700 or something like that in the game. I don't even know how much I got. I think I got like maybe 200 or maybe even less. And uh, I was after I played the game, I did the campaign and stuff like that, and I did what I wanted to do. I stopped playing. I haven't played that game in years, and I really can't tell you why. But my Switch is like underused to me personally. Like I love the Nintendo Switch. It's one of my favorite Nintendo consoles at this point in time. I really love that thing. I really do wish they wish. I really do wish they like made a more powerful Switch console though. I think Nintendo just kind of needs that right now. Um, then again, I guess developers could optimize their games fully, but, uh, or better. <laughs> this part's kind of weird, but cool. It's kind of weird that, like, you know, everything, like, stopped, like, all of the music just goes away. What the fuck even just happened there? Why did he just do that? <laughs> or maybe, I, I don't know, because, like, he looked like he rammed into a wall, but he didn't ram into a wall. It's weird. Just about to do a backflip there. And don't try to do what I just did because that was absolutely stupid. See, this is the cool part about this galaxy, right? There's that little waterfall, but there's a black hole there that's sucking in all the water. And that's really cool because, like, the water is, like, it gets all twisted and, like, look how dark it gets. It's kind of cool. Like, it really is. Oh, yeah. Nice save, Cam. Nice save past me. We're actually going to have to go back to this galaxy, too. It's, it's a part of, like, a comet. Um... But yeah, so oh, what was I talking about? <laughs> God, I hate it when I do that. I was doing this last night with my stream too. I was like, damn, what the fuck was I, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, um, my Nintendo Switch is very, very underutilized. I love that thing to death, but I don't play that much of it. And it's sad too, because Switch is literally like amazing. Like I, I love that damn console to death. And when I start playing it, I really do. You know, the first Pokemon game I've ever played, which was a beat it about last year, was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Now, some people might say that's a sin to even talk about that game because a lot of people don't like it. And I'm just over here like, I really like me some Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. That shit was awesome. And I personally always had an affinity for Gen 4. That was technically the, the generation I was probably supposed to play back when I was little, but... Actually... For one thing, okay, back in the day, when I was growing up, uh, freaking the Gen 2 remakes were the just were about to come out, like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, right? Those were about to come out when I was starting, like when people started talking about Pokemon, like I remember the Poke Walker and stuff like that. I was supposed to get like a, uh, you know, a, a Pokemon game. I was supposed to get that one, but I didn't get that one. 
but I was heavily into the anime. So, of course, I used to freaking um, want to get Gen 4 Pokemon, but I didn't because, of course, I, at that time, I was still interested too much into Sonic the Hedgehog games. I didn't like playing other things other than Sonic, and that is such a bad thing that I just wish things were different. But, um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, there was, um, I didn't get to play that. Actually, one day, like, a couple of years ago, this could have been, like, 2015, 2016, when uh, I was just kind of, like, looking around GameStop one day, I was buying me some, like, PlayStation 3 games because at the time, I was, I sold my Wii U. I had no other console except my PlayStation 3. 2015, to me, is known as the Dark Age for video game consoles because I literally had nothing else. All of my video game consoles went away. They died. But, um, so I was selling my PlayStation. I was trying to get some PlayStation 3 games and the guy at the counter was like, hey man, you can get this game right here. It's a new Pokemon game, brand new sealed for this amount of money. And it wasn't, I don't think it was actually expensive at all. And I was looking at him like, huh, really? I can get that? He was like, yeah, man, you, you should get it. Like, he was egging me on, too, to, like, get it. And I was like, why? And the game was a brand new sealed copy of Pokemon Diamond. That was really close. But uh, I didn't get it because I wanted, I probably wanted Spider-Man 3 on the PlayStation 3 more than that. I, I, I don't know. I probably really should have gotten that. Um, I, I think I had a 3DS at that time. I'm not, I don't even... Actually, that might have been the real reason why I didn't actually get it. Because I don't even know if I had a 3DS. The 3DS that I have now, which is a new 3DS. I don't know if I actually had that. So, that might be the reason why. But, damn, sometimes I think about that. I'm like, damn, I really wish I actually just bought it anyway. I really wanted to say, like, okay, right then and there, I'm going to try Pokemon. But, it must have been because I didn't have a 3DS. Because I'm pretty sure, even if back then, I would have bought it. I'm pretty sure I would have parts really dumb by the way this is a part where you have to like blow uh you have to blow the bubble uh where mario is and uh you, it's, it's not really that hard it can be a little bit tricky but it's, it's a nice little mini game that like maybe takes you a little a little break from everything else did we do the last section of beach bowl galaxy did we yeah, we did. Okay, I was just literally fucking spacing out. But anyway, I say it all to say that I need to play my Nintendo Switch again. I need to do another Switch Let's Play. Actually, no, I did play the Switch when I actually got uh, Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So there's some, there's some awesomeness about getting that console. It's just like, there's just too many damn other games to play nowadays. You know what? I really want to talk about this game again, because I'm getting off topic, kind of. And again, this is, this is my stuff, so I can call, talk about whatever I want. What I love this sound, like, right here, it's so, it's so mystical. It reminds me of the Nintendo Wii for some reason. I don't know what it was, man. Why do I feel like I'm the only, well, I'm, pro I'm probably not, but, like, it's like I'm the only person that I can ever think about. Oh, that's going to bother me. I feel like I'm the only person I think about that, like, really... How? How, Cameron? How did you do that? I feel like I'm, like, one of the only people that can, like... That really, like, see the Wii for, like, a, 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 like a, a new age, space age type console, you know? Like, it's just... I, I don't see it as just a regular game console. It seems like a console that was made... Um like in the proper future like i went yeah it was made in 2006 but like 2006 was the future for a lot of people anyway so oh oh thank you thank you cam that 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 really did put a smile on my crocodile thank you <laughs> but um yeah the we just seemed like a really a console made like in a, a future time and that's that time seem now you know it was called revol the codename for the console was revolution for a reason and i know that the wii is like known for a whole lot of shovelware and i'm gonna be honest here when i had my wii which i still do um 
I don't, well, not the exact Wii that I had before, unfortunately. I had to get another one, and then I had to get another one. And I'm probably going to have to get another one, too, because I want a black Wii again. I like the white Wii, but the, the black Wii just looks really cool. I wish I had a blue Wii, though, that looked like, uh, that could play GameCube games. But there is a blue Wii, but it doesn't play GameCube games, unfortunately. It's just so weird that they decided to take that out in some of the game the releases because I thought that the Wii U was basically a GameCube in, the, in of itself, kind of. But um, anyway, yeah, when it um, I was talking about it again. Damn it! You didn't uh, you didn't see it, but I actually legit had to stop the recording and play it back to figure out what the hell I was talking about. Oh my god. My ADHD is so bad. I literally had to. I paced here for a second trying to figure out what was happening. Anyway. Yeah. Um, when it comes to shovelware. I know that Wii was known for shovelware. But personally for me. I never played uh, just a, a lot of shovelware games. I mean I know people might call like Ben 10 Protector of the Earth. Or something like Cars shovelware. But those were actually good games. But if you're over here playing stuff like Ninja Breadman. Then I can't really relate to you. Fast foe comment uh, in orbit. So fast foe comments are basically comments that make everything like move really, really fast. It's like not too fast, but it's it's fast enough to be different, I guess. It's another like challenge comment. Well, they all are challenge comments, but you know what I mean. And it's going back to this, because as you can see, all of the uh, blocks or thwomps or whatever the frick those box things are, they're moving a lot faster, but it's not that harder than what it already was, honestly. But, um, yeah, when it comes to, you know, the shovelware, I don't really know the Wii for shovelware. Sure, it had, like, inferior graphics as it compared to, uh, it had inferior graphics compared to, like, maybe it's competition or whatever. But I don't think it, I really don't think it was that bad, you know? I, used, I remember I used to, like, get, like, legit mad when, like, people call, like, the Nintendo Wii, like, a baby's toy. Like, really? <laughs> I don't even know what type of insult that is. Like, really? Like, how? You ain't gonna say, like, you weren't addicted to the Wii? I was actually very much addicted to, like, the motion controls of the Wii itself. Oh, this is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just laughed at Mario's death. That's fucked up. Damn. Let me laugh again. <laughs> no. Okay. No, but seriously, though, um, I was obsessed with the motion controls because I just thought that was the next step for games. I, I mean, sure, I still actually like playing with the controller. I didn't want it to always be... Um, I didn't want it to always be motion controls. But let's just be honest. The motion controls in Super Mario... In the, uh, the, a lot of the Wii games, a lot of the first-party games, was actually pretty damn good. I don't think it I don't I don't think it was bad personally for me. So I I, I don't know. I, I just I think the Wii is an amazing console just in of itself. But yeah, uh, this galaxy is not that hard at all. I just kept making a lot of dumb ass mistakes, honestly. And of course, to be completely transparent, I forgot to edit them all out. I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, stuff like this kind of happens sometimes when it comes to recording stuff. I'm surprised I was able to play Half-Life completely just, just straight through. You know, I, like, like that was a, a longer game. And, well, actually, I think this is probably a longer game. But a lot of, a lot of things in that game kind of look the same. So I'm surprised I was able to get as far as I did with that in terms of editing. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking about, like, when I'll get to, like, Half-Life, the next Half-Life game or something like that. Again, I sh probably should be playing Blue Shift or Opposing Force sometime, but... Eh. Right now, uh, I actually kind of wanted to talk about this, not for self-promotion, but also self-promotion, because I think it's actually kind of a cool thing that I'm doing right now. Uh, I am doing, I am playing, trying to play through the entire Sonic series on my main channel. I am streaming on there. Uh, as of right now, well, not right now, right now, but you know, I've been streaming there, um, 
a lot more often than usual playing some Sonic games. We are we just played Sonic 1, 2, 3. And I attempted to play the fucking Game Gear games last night, and I literally was playing Sonic 1 on the Game Gear. I was playing Sonic 2. No, I was playing Sonic 1. I fucking died, and I just I got a game over. I was like, no, well, fuck this. Let's play something else. I played Sonic Labyrinth, and I finally understand why that game is terrible now. Instead of just Sonic being slow, because I used to say, like, oh, man, that game sucks just because Sonic is slow. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And then I actually played, and I was like, oh, fuck. This actually fucking sucks. Shit. So, and then I also played Sonic Blast, which I, I was going fine for that game, but then the game just had this weird-ass difficulty spike, which made no damn sense, because, you know, you'd think that game would be really easier or something like that, but no, it was, it, it got this, like, weird underwater thing, and then I played Sonic Triple Trouble, which was such a breath of fresh air, I, I actually liked that game a lot. Uh, it had some moments in there where it was kind of, you know, eh, because, like, like, the fucking Atomic Destroyer Zone, that, that one was really confusing to go around. But everything other than that was cool. I'm currently looking to see if, like, uh, there's a Sonic 1, like, Sega Master System, like, remake. And I completely forgot that there was... Completely forgot. But anyway, this is a uh, ghostly galaxy. I honestly forgot the name of it. But this is basically a the hunted Boo type mansion galaxy, Boo Mansion galaxy, and it's a really cool galaxy because I just fucked everything up there. <laughs> It's a really, I mean, really, it's a cool as, I love this galaxy person. You know, actually, wait, there's a Sonic 1 Master System remake. Is there a Sonic 2? Ooh, there is a Sonic 2 Master System. Okay, that's the, that's the version I'm playing then, next. But, uh... Yeah, with that being said, uh, I, I really like this galaxy, though. This is a really cool galaxy. I love the 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 music here and stuff like that although this part right here really confused the shit out of me i don't know where the hell to stand or anything it's, it's, like it's weird like you have to like go right here it's weird this game also reminds me a lot of like luigi's mansion and the thing about luigi's mansion is that like luigi's mansion was a game that i really wanted to play back in the day but i never got the chance to i actually thought luigi's mansion it was like a, a really creepy game which is kind of crazy, considering it's a Mario game, or Luigi game, whatever. And, uh, I don't, looking at gameplay that I've seen, like, I've never seen, like, a complete playthrough of that game. Uh, but it, it does look pretty cool. And actually, speaking of Luigi, what? Luigi? What are you doing here, bro? Oh, man, you look so scared. Shut up, my god. Tight broad and her life was okay, I'll get copyrighted. I'm gonna get copyrighted if I keep if I keep playing that song. But um that's my ringtone by the way. I, I can't, I don't know. There's something about that song. Anyway. Yeah, so Luigi's here apparently, and again, if it wasn't obvious enough, kind of like yeah, this is kind of like a Luigi's Mansion reference, I guess. But also, we can transform now into Boo Mario. We can shake the Wii Remote to vanish. This is actually a really cool power-up. I actually like transforming into Boo Mario. It's not like the other power-ups where it's timed. You basically stay Boo Mario just like any other uh, until you, you know, you get hit or something. Um, well, you can't really get hit. I don't think you can. I'm not sure. They don't really have the boo mario where like you can get hit by other enemies usually it's other boos around and when you're boo mario the boos love you which is weird because like do, do the boos I'm, i mean i'm not saying like you can't be you know there, there's like i'm not saying like because i don't know are the boos gay i don't know are the boo, do the boos even have a gender i'm not sure 
We're gonna fucking make the frogs gay. I don't know. Maybe this could be like a female boo or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the boo is gay. I don't care. It's just weird. Like, maybe it's that mustache. Honestly, that mustache is amazing. But yeah, I, I love like being around. You can like press the A button to like jump. And to like float, what well, you like, press the A button like multiple times to like float. And uh, if you try to save him, uh, Luigi as, as the ghost, he says, A ghost, eek! Yeah, and it's like, it's just really funny because he, he will not, you can't save him when you're Boo Mario. Bro, oh, you finally came. I got lost with the toads. It was terrible. I found the power star, so that makes up for it, right? I don't know why I'm rolling my eyes. Okay. <laughs> oh man, Luigi. Nice job, man. Thanks. Let's go home. <laughs> I love that when he says it was me, Luigi. Oh man, you know what? I actually gotta talk about something. Uh so yeah, we saved Luigi. Yes, Luigi is in this game. He's not being left out like he was in Super Mario 64 or Super Mario... S Damn, I just realized that. Super Mario 64 and Sunshine? I mean, goddamn, Luigi. Why? It's like, yeah, seriously, for some reason, Nintendo wasn't kind to Luigi at one point. I don't know why. I mean, he was a new Super Mario Bros. DS. But, you know, he wasn't, he, oh my god, that's just so weird, why? And then I remember, like, fucking magazine at the time was saying, like, they left Louis, they, yo, they left Yoshi out the series at the time. I'm like, yo, he was in Super Mario Sunshine. Like, what? I miss Luigi. I used to say that Luigi was my favorite Mario brother, but I actually liked them both together. Bleeder, squish. We've made sure Luigi is safe. Or safe. Uh, yeah, by the way, there's a toad right there that, like, sleeps there the entire game. That's a very, very, very sleepy toad, because he's literally sleeping there the entire game. So, uh, but, you know, let him have his rest. I hate people, personally, who, uh, interrupt sleep. Oh my god, if you want to piss me off really bad, like, instantly, you wake me up? Or you wake someone else up. I don't know what it is. I hate being woken up for, for stupid shit. Especially like when I'm trying to like really just like relax and you know get some shut eye or whatever. And like someone just asks me, hey, can you wake up? Because you gotta do this, you gotta do that. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. I don't wanna get up. Go do it yourself. Literally, I'm I can be like the nicest person ever, but then you wake me up. Fuck you. Fuck you. But you wake up other people? Oh my god, I can't stand it. Like, sometimes, I, I I don't really have, like, a story, really, right now, at the top of my head. But I've seen multiple times, like, where I'm just, like, chilling with someone, and then they fall asleep, right? They fall asleep, and then, like, someone that they know comes in the room and is like, oh, man, you gotta wake them up. I'm like, why can't you just let them sleep? Let them sleep. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I remember one time, like, uh... I think my grandpa was like knocked out sleep one time and like someone came in and said oh you gotta wake up you gotta wake up i'm like dude let him freaking sleep god it's like people don't know the freaking meaning of like you gotta you want to relax you want to just get some shut eye because whenever i fall asleep it's usually because of a reason like i'm tired or something like that you know i don't like to take naps but when i take naps i just like to just sit there and just like relax and just ugh. Anyway, so I just got into a huge rant about that because it, it, it literally pisses me off. I can't stand people who just interrupt people's sleep and stuff. I feel very strongly as I... Why does this remind me of A Hat in Time? Which is another game series that I probably should have put playing. Although I'm not sure, like, I think when I play A Hat in Time... I think I'll probably use my recording that I, I had a, originally had, I had in time let's play on my room, my main channel, Kami Cam, but, um, you know, of course I do let's plays here now, so it's kind of like out of the question. I was thinking about just like, just bringing that let's play back though, because 
It was a really good Let's Play. How the fuck did I fall? It was a really good Let's Play, though. I might just use a lot of those parts. I didn't record the entire thing, though. So, of course, eventually I would like say, I would actually say, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here now. And, of course, that was a live Let's Play. I just liked my time with the hat on top. <laughs> uh, I'm so stupid. Anyway, I wanted to take this time to also talk about um, some recent news that has just uh, came to my attention, and that is the um, the recent um, retirement of Charles Marnet, the voice of who uh, who else? Mario. And you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I don't ever usually get too sad about when someone like dies or retires or something like that because like especially like celebrities and stuff like that but when i tell y'all that this like legit struck a, t a chord with me actually it kind of I, I think i lied because i remember when dmx died you know dmx the rapper if you don't know who the hell he is i don't know what's wrong with you um when he when he passed away I actually felt some type of way about that because I really liked his music. I love the rawness and his his tone and all that stuff. But you know, just uh, Charles Martinet is not dead or anything. He's gonna basically be something called a Mario ambassador. I heard that's like a role that basically is like you training the other Mario voice to be you. And uh, it's just like, I really like, <laughs> I don't know, guys, like, I can't believe that he's not going to be the voice of Mario for anymore because he's been Mario all of my life. He's been Mario well before I was even a, a thing, well before I was even conceived, well before I was even a cell, I was even thought about. And like now he's he's leaving the role. I didn't even like ever think this would happen, you know? Some people thought like, oh yeah, well, because he's aging and then like, he's not starting to sound different. He can't really do the Mario voice anymore. And hey. like, I don't know about that because I've, you know, I, I've heard him in the Mario movie because a uh, fun fact, Charles Marnet is actually in the movie. I think a lot of people should know that, but he's not Mario, of course. That's Chris Pratt. But you know who is Mario? You know who he does voice, I should say? He voices Mario's dad. He also voices like this other like Italian plumber guy that sounds exactly like Mario. It's crazy and weird, but it's him. He does like his, the exact same Mario voice and everything. And he does Mario's dad, which is really, really strange to me. Cause like it's, it sounds a lot like Mario, but it doesn't at the same time. And I was like, God dang, this is weird. And then like when, when Mario came up to Mario and Luigi at the end of the movie, spoiler alert. And he was like, what's new? Like, I was like, oh my God, he was about to break into his Mario role right there. I was like, wow. <laughs> like, he wants to be Mario so bad. Anyway. Yeah, I, okay, so basically in this galaxy, we're trying to find Luigi. He's very much in a very easy place. He's right up so on top of this. Off top of this house. If you're good at this game, then you should probably see where the hell he is already. But, um, you know, it's really easy to fucking just go get him. He's really quick. Luigi has, I think, about three or five of these, uh, these missions where you have to go look for him. They're actually kind of cool. I actually like going back through the galaxies and trying to, like, find out where he is because I really like exploring the galaxies, like I said before. And looking for Luigi is just always amazing because he's always bringing back. An amazing like star and stuff like that he actually does bring about uh actually bring back eventually like a green star i'm not sure if that's going to be in this part but he definitely does bring back a green star at one point anyway um yeah with that being said i was really sad about charles martinet retiring from the role but you know i guess times are gonna why scam really times are just gonna be like that you know I've heard the new Mario, which apparently, you know, the new, the new voice of Mario's is like already going to be in the new Super Mario game, Super Mario Wonder, which I think I've already said I'm going to do a Let's Play when that comes out of that game. But, you know, he, he sounds pretty good. When he said Wowie Zowie, that did put me off a little bit because it sounded so similar, but not 
at like it sounded super like 99.98 percent similar to like charles we still don't know who the hell that voice actor is but you know to be honest though he he does seem like he is doing a good job so i guess there is that it's just so crazy that he's not gonna be the voice of mario anymore to me or not to me but like just in general Fun fact, uh, the Wii Remote actually has speakers, and whenever you spin with Mario, um, you actually get, um, y you actually hear the fucking Blunch Star sound effect, the, the whoa, 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 whoa. that sound, you hear that when, uh, you get in there, oh my god, this looks so cool, oh my god, that looks so awesome. That was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. I love doing it every time. So, let's get back to the game. Uh, right now, we're going to be doing a race with this particular boo. This is, uh, I don't know his name, actually. He's like just a speedy boo or whatever. Um, he's after the, the, the star, and you are too. And basically, we're going to have to race him to go get it. And honestly, this race is actually pretty damn easy. Uh, you know, of course, it's not the most easiest. Like, like you, it, it, I used to have some trouble with this, but it's really not that hard. There's also like a little skip that you can do with like some um, some uh, launch stars. No, not launch stars. It's uh, there's a little, there's like a launch star, which is the big ones, and then there's also the uh, the sling stars. Yeah, the sling, the sling stars. There's actually one over here that gives you a little bit of advantage. Like, over there, you see that? At least I think they're called, like, Sling Stars. Of course, he can't use them because he's a stupid. I'm not sure what would have happened if I, like, didn't press anything there. Dun, 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 dun. I like how, like, the music is, like, so dynamic. Because the music, like, the, you know, that sound, it, like, doesn't really come up until, you know, the boo gets close to you, which is just really cool. I don't know. I really like it myself. Also, I love how, like, before you get those star bits on those trees, um, they look, they look so happy, but then you take, you, you get the star bits and they look evil. <laughs> I, I like little things like that. But yeah, if I seem a little bit more like, I, I don't know, maybe I might seem a little bit less amped up than usual, but that's because I'm like actually like legit sad that Charles is not going to be the voice of Mario anymore. That actually does not put a smile on my crocodile. And I'm not, I'm not trying to joke around, like that really does make me sad. Oh, forgot to say, tell someone happy birthday. Always be happy to people. I mean, not be happy. Always be happy. Always be proud. Always be... Treat people how you want to be treated. I haven't talked to this person in a while. But I decided to tell him happy birthday because, hey, you know, we don't talk that much anymore. But, hey, and you kind of did me wrong. But, hey, look, you deserve, you deserve someone to know that you someone was thinking about you on the day that you were born into this world you know and it's really bad too because a lot of people still actually forget my birthday and my birthday is really easy to is really easy to think of like about like you just think of you just go to september you think of two repetitive numbers and when you're whenever think whenever numbers are repeated repeated it when numbers are repeated, it's actually easier to remember. Because I know for a fact one of my other friends are actually born on December 22nd of, of uh, I think, 2000 as well. So you think of September, you think of 22, 2000, who else has a birthday like that but me that you know of? Maybe some other people, but I'm the only Cameron that you know that was born on 922 of 2000. 
So, you know, I don't know why people don't know. I really don't mind it personally. I just think it's kind of funny that even me, like, I, I know people's birthdays. And I actually can, I am very prone to forget. But I know people have forgotten about me. I feel like pretty much some people would be like, they would tell me happy birthday, but only like later on in the day. And I know it's because like at night or something like that, because I know they forgot. I know they did. All right, like, I'm not going to say any names, but my friends, if you're watching this, you know who you are. I've noticed how many times you asked me about when my uh, birthday was. Is your birthday on the, the 21st? It's the 21st, right? I hear that a lot. I don't know why everybody thinks my birthday is on the 21st. I don't have any ill will towards you guys. Just letting you guys know. Oh, shit. Fuck those spiders. But yeah. I don't really care. I mean, I love my birthday too, but I don't really I don't really celebrate my birthday anymore. I wish I did though. The last time I really celebrated celebrated my birthday was like back when I was 18. I had like a big little cookout. It's probably because I just graduated and because I was just Whatever, but I think there was it was a joint birthday party, but it wasn't like it was a joint birthday party, but like it, I think someone else was having a birthday too, but it wasn't on the same day that I was. They were they were just kind of lumping minds with theirs, and it was that's kind of weird. I like having birthday parties personally. I like having birthday parties because it gives a chance for everybody to come together and like eat and stuff and. You know, chat. Not just all about me, but I, I do like getting stuff for my birthday. I don't. I have not gotten anything for my birthday in a while, though. Hell, I don't even think I got anything for Christmas last year. I used to think, well, like, oh yeah, like that's just like kid stuff. But I, I don't know. People get like Christmas presents for people, like you know, even after like grown, but. I didn't get anything, but that's all right with me. I got myself stuff. That sounded really sad. <laughs> that actually did make me. That, that that. I mean, I'm not sad about it. It's just that did make me. That that did sound like a, like I was really sad about that. But I'm not. I swear. Anyway, now this is probably the coolest. One of the coolest boss fights, like, oh my god, really? I have 26? I'm, like, literally four star bits away. But, this is literally, like, one of the coolest bosses in this, probably in this game, probably in the Mario series in general. This guy right here is Rock Devil Monster some shit bitch motherfucker. Alright, he's a something... Um, he's a guy that throws rocks, and uh, he'll kill you, and that's his thing. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say besides that. I mean, he's just kind of, uh, he he's really cool, though, because, like, you have to, like, wait until the, the dark boos come out of him, and then you have to, like, use those boos to like throw them into them because they're basically like ba bomb I, I think they're basically ba bomb blues sometimes i like to get like two of them like this like do stuff like that oh that looks so freaking cool and i love it like when you hit him and then like the music like starts to get like amp up to like like i don't know it just sounds cool it's really an easy boss the comment version makes it a little harder, but that's only because you can only get hit once. Yes, and actually, <laughs> we're actually going to be doing the comment version of this right after this boss fight, actually. So, that's a thing. Right? We are going to be doing the comment version right after this, right? I think so. Yeah, we are. Weird. Anyway. Honestly, I don't really have that too much of a advice for this this boss. Just try to keep running. 
But I don't stay in a, in one place at, at, at once. I don't. I'm not sure if star bits do anything because I I don't think I even explained this yet. But you can throw star bits at enemies and you can like stun them and stuff like that. I don't think that really does anything in this game, or to this boss. So I wouldn't really bother using it honestly. Why the fuck did it sound like some big colossal monster and then when it starts screaming, it sounds like some fucking five-year-old or something. I don't know. Ah, I gotta love that storm. Gotta love that star music. God, I, I'm telling you guys, I'm really, like, very excited, like, doing this let's play in the first place. I'm really excited to, like get to like the end game and stuff like that because that's when it's going to get really fun for me personally because i'm actually going to start playing this game for once you know because i actually um well i i i won't really explain why <laughs> because i i should but I, i'm not going to but um you know so, of course, yeah, this, like I was saying, we're about to do the boss fight again, because this is a Daredevil comic. And it, it really, oh, so it's called a Boulder Geist? Oh, and I was right, it is called Ghostly Galaxy, I just remembered that that is actually, that's a pretty on-the-nose name, like, Ghostly Galaxy, man, I, I never would have guessed that Yeah, seriously. It really makes... It really is weird that this game isn't really, like, that hard, though. Like, I used to think this game was one of the hardest things ever, but, like... Like, nowadays, I play it like it's nothing. Actually, you know, one thing about this Let's Play... Uh, fun fact. I actually recorded this entire Let's Play before, right? I recorded this Let's Play a while ago. But, um, I actually, when I was doing, when I, when I was in the process of actually making this Let's Play that you're seeing right now, I decided to just go on ahead and make a brand new Let's Play, because for some reason I was having some Mario fever, and I was like, oh man, it'd be kind of cool, right, if I just went back and played the entirety of the game again, after it already recording it, so I deleted the entire recording and decided to play it again. And if you actually check my community tab, then you would actually know this. Because I posted about it on the community tab. I was like, hey, you guys, this is really cool. This game is, like, so amazing that I decided to, like, just play the entire game again for a Let's Play. And I was kind of, like, teasing the, I, you know, the, the up-and-coming Let's Play. It was supposed to kind of come out after that, but I've had some technical difficulties. Or not technical difficulties, but I was going through a whole lot. And, uh... Couldn't do the Let's Play at the time. But, um... Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I think this game is just that good to the point where I feel like it deserves to be played twice. Hell, I've been thinking the same thing about, like, Half-Life 2, but I don't want to, like, delete that recording because... and redo it all over again because... my Half-Life 2 recording was very special, so... You'll see the original recording there. You won't see, like, a new version. But, um... You know. Sometimes the game is just so good. Just way too good for you to pass up the opportunity to play it again. I know that somehow... That probably wouldn't happen. Like, I love Sonic... I was about to say that probably would happen with, like, for Sonic Frontiers. But that would actually not happen for Sonic Frontiers. I know for a fact that would never happen for Sonic Frontiers. Oh my god, no. But, um, yeah. I just gotta figure out when I'm gonna get the Super Mario Galaxy 2 or any other, any other Mario games. You know, to this very day, I still have not been Super Mario Bros. without save states. One thing I didn't know about the original Mario, the original Super Mario Brothers, was apparently because you know, when you die in that game. And you, if you get like a game over, you're knocked all the way back to the title screen. If you're in World 8 and you get a game over in World 8, 
then you're going all the way back to World 1. World 1-1. One, one. However, apparently, if there's a, there's a certain cheat that you can do in that game, that if you die and you get a game over, you actually start in the very same world that you died in. So, with the cheat, if you died in World 8-8, eight, eight, or World 8-4, you and you did the cheat, you would start back at eight in World 8-1. I don't know why it's a cheat, but whatever. Anyway, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Boy Base Galaxy, or Boy, however you pronounce it. This is one of the best galaxies ever because, oh my god, this has got to be one of the most funnest galaxies ever. And also, it's just, it looks beautiful. It's like a, a battleship armada with that, that, that like shoots bubbles and stuff like that. And it's like this crazy awesome thing. And it's got like this underwater like weight thing. And it's really cool because you got to like go on top of all this. You got to like, you got to like infiltrate the war the war sh machine premises location or whatever it's really cool the music oh my god it's so awesome jesus christ i love this music i love everything about it we're gonna have to take a slight detour though this is the very 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 top of the base right now and what you'll notice is that it's basically being like it's basically being uh like powered by a particular star it's not a normal star but instead it's a green star which uh we have not seen you actually i don't know what happens if like you fall into like the like the glass right there is that glass or water it looks like glass anyway so yes this is actually our damn <laughs> this is our first green star and Actually, no, is it? No, this isn't our first green star, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. No, I, I'm misremembering. I'm thinking way too far ahead. This this is our first green star. The green stars are a particular set of stars that you have to get that are not Luigi stars, unfortunately. But there are they are basically like special stars or like secret hidden stars. There's about three of them in the game. Although I think there's more of them because the green stars let you do the trial galaxies as well. And what the trial galaxies are, are they are special galaxies that, why is this taking me so long? They are special galaxies that are supposed to quote unquote test your skills. I think I'm going to do the trial galaxies before I actually beat the game. I think so. Oh my God, that, that was like my chance right there. I don't know. That, that was a that was a little tricky, and I, I I'm not even gonna lie, a little tricky getting there. But yeah, there's three of these stars in the game. Um, you get one, Luigi gets one, and I forgot where the other one is, but I'm gonna get that one too. Of course, could, this is a hundred percent run of Super Mario Galaxy anyway, so how am I not going to? You rescued a green star. These stars have a special power. Ask the green ones about them. After all, they will transform into green power stars someday. Do all Lumas transform into power stars? Huh. Yeah, um, so I'm not sure if you guys can kind of pick up on some of the tone of this game. I'm a Sword the Galaxy's Child Galaxy. Get to those sutter friends, me, and stuff. Well, we gotta go back to Boy Base Galaxy because we're actually not done here. We're going to go back in the same exact water place, and this time, we're not going to go in there. We're going to completely level this place, because this little big-ass ball, this ball right here, is basically weighing everything down that we need to get to. And we need to get all the way over there. All the way up there. See how cool this is? So awesome. But anyway, um... I should get into this, and this, I'm surprised I'm kind of getting into this now, but I won't get into all of it, because all that stuff will unfold. There is a specific theme to this game. I won't outright say what the theme is, but there is a specific theme to this game that makes this game a little bit more special than just a typical Mario game, right? 
It's not a game with like the most story or anything like that, but there is a particular theme to this game that might make it something of a existential game, you know? It's it's a very This is probably what the answer to this type of thing is. You know, it's like it's a it's a it's a little bit more of a philosophical game, you know. I should just turn off my phone, Jesus Christ. Um it's more of a philosophical game. There's more to think about. And I, again, I will not be spoiling it if you've never seen this game ever. But, you know, there's something to be said about this game entirely. It's, there's, this is not just a Mario game. This is, this is spiritual. I'll say that. So. And uh, for the first time ever, I decided to put my phone on mute while I'm recording. Oh my god! <laughs> But yeah, I, I really want to get into that later. Uh, we'll kind of be getting into a little bit of that. Um, but uh, just just not yet because we have to, you know, do the, the final boss and all that stuff. Well, not the final boss. We got to do the kitchen boss fight and all that other stuff. Although, I'm not sure how. Wait a minute. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure. Let me see what happens. And we got the star. Seriously, I love this galaxy. This galaxy is super fun. But I think now it's time for us to go defeat Bowser. Right? It better be, god dang it. I hope I'm not going crazy and thinking that, like, we're actually going to be reading Rosalina's stories because I was promised Rosalina stories personally for me from me yeah we're reading Rosalina's stories it's kind of crazy what we do like <laughs> to get to like the to it but anyway Bowser Jr.'s airship armada. You know, it's actually really crazy. Um, at this point in time, we have so many stars that every time we enter a new dorm, we're already going to be able to select all the other galaxies. This is weird to me because, personally, when I played this game, like, over and over again, like, back in the day, every time I played it, I was, um... I was always, like, under level. Like, I never always... I never played all of the stars in the dome. I never got all of them because some of them were too hard... And sometimes I just wanted to move on. But nowadays, since I know how to play this game and I don't do that, and so I don't usually move on to a, another galaxy unless I'm done with one of them. I don't do that anymore. Now, it's just so weird that I'm like able to like get all the stars. I don't know. God, this is so cool. I don't know. I, I really like the, the fucking the spaceship name. And I gotta say, these cannons, how you get to them, is so much better than fucking sh Well, not how you get to them, but the cannons and how they work are so much better than what they were in Super Mario 64. I hated this, the cannon system. It was just too much for me. It just didn't work that much, and it was really weird, and... I don't like, you know, the, tra the trajectory was weird. It wasn't uh, like a constant, like, I don't know. I didn't like, I didn't like doing that. I didn't like launching from, from cannons in Super Mario 64. Of course, now I do, though. I don't really care for it. Although I do care about something, and that's my hunger. <laughs> I'm getting kind of hungry right now. Welcome to the shop. I can get you this. Yeah, this is um usually the the lumas. These lumas come in before the. Uh, when do these lumas come? They usually come in before the boss. So whenever you see these lumas, honestly, expect the boss fight to be underway. Damn. 
Damn, this thing kind of moves faster than I remember. Or is that just me? Oh, that was fucking close. Damn, that thing moves fast. Why does that move so fast? What the hell? Am I going crazy? Ha 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 ha, shut the freak up, motherfucker. You just don't give up. Fine then, I'll just whoop you myself. You want the Grand Star so, Grand Star so bad? You just gotta take it from me. Okay. That can be arranged. This little small child trying to step up to Mr. Mario! What a Cretan. So, this kind of reminds me of the Kamek boss fight from the fountain, but not really because we're not doing that. Um, this has got to be one of the most easiest boss fights in the game. Like, it's really not that hard at all. I mean, you just get your Cooper shells and you throw it at, you know, Bowser Jr. Oh, there's a Kamek. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Looking at it now, it is really crazy looking. That is kind of weird, man. I'm still thinking about Boulder, guys. <laughs> that name is actually pretty cool. That That's a pretty creative name, if I must say. Boulder, guys. Yeah, that's nice. Anyway, um... Jesus Christ, man. I'm sorry. I'm, like, kind of caught up in, like, the spectacle of, like, everything that's going on right now. And I'm also thinking about what I should eat. I'm really hungry right now. I don't know why it's such a bad thing for me to not eat. I'm not even a person that doesn't like to eat. I love to eat. But for some reason, I, I just find it hard to satisfy my hunger. What I've actually kind of been doing lately is I've been literally eating, like, low carbs. Like, I've been eating, like, a whole lot of just, like, meat, you know? Like, you know what I did? I, I made, I made like, hamburger steak. I made, like, a lot of hamburger steak at one point, and I was just eating that. And honestly, that satisfies me for, like, the whole entire day. So usually I eat that as, like, dinner or something. I might eat some, like, yogurt or some salad, because I'm, I'm trying to, like, be on, a, like, a diet plan. Considering the fact that I, I do run track, and, again, I still do have a little bit of weight, which has been going away slowly but maturely. But yeah. And now we've unlocked the bedroom. Ha! <laughs> it's time to take Rosalina to the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Anyway! Uh... <laughs> anyway. Say, so look at that. Already unlocked so many galaxies, although they didn't look like all of them. There's another galaxy that I have to get to. Although I'm pretty sure when we go up in there. Uh, I'm pretty sure when we go up in there, it will. Yeah. Anyway, the engine room seems to be one of the most important ones because one, like Rosalina just said, once she gets, once we get the engine room running, we'll be able to fly to the quote-unquote center of the universe. But now it's time for something a little bit different. See, now we have the bedroom, and honestly, this is an amazing. Uh, this is I, I, I love the bedroom because you know, that's where fun goes down. But now. There's also this red lumen that says that they have a secret and not, they're not telling. And uh, we're not going to know about that secret for a while. So now it's time for something a little bit different, though. Whoa. Let us begin. Okay. What the fuck? You guys want a story? Chapter one, the celestial duo. Oh, man. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. It looks like a Luma. Also, that thing looks like a rusted spaceship. It looks like a toad. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. You know what? I was thinking about this theory. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming home for coming for me for on a comet," she said. The Star Child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. I'll wait with you. The little girl promised Luma. 
At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. By the way, you can go back by pressing something. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fix up the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky, starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. Oh yeah, we got other chapters, by the way. <laughs> Chapter two, Star Bits. I think we have three chapters, I believe. Days passed with no sign of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl, above the rumble, above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, they packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea, but... Apricot flavored tea? Sounds delicious. I forgot to bring water! At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after seeing, hearing this. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but join in. That's actually pretty bad. Uh, humans can't really survive a long time without water. Alright, maybe just a little nibble. Lugging far out the ship, and the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. That is really dangerous. The star bits tasted like honey. Uh, that's not really saying too much about, like, what, well, about water, but okay. Whoa. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue garment shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that comet. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mo no mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! I thought comets were hot. How are they standing? Oh no, I think it's icy. Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was uh, pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of starbits in case the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding starbits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's ice water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the, tur the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. There's another chapter? Oh, okay. Uh, chapter 4, The Dream. This has got me, like, really thinking about a whole lot of things, even right now. One night, the dream, the girl asks about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother, retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'll always be watching over you like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see you in the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this Luma, well, damn, she began to cry. The, tra the pair traveled through the starry skies, and though she encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was disappointed. Now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma another crease, squeeze. Why am I fucking doing this so fast? The girl closed her eyes and said, I'll take care of you. With these worlds, she sp felt. You, you read it. That should do it for today. Okay, so if it wasn't obvious enough... Yeah, that is basically telling, like, a big giant story of, like, you know, uh, Rosalina's, like, past. 
Uh, there is a lot to go over with this stuff, and I can't really get into all of what I really want to get to with this in the terms of the significance of the stories because there is like so much lore to like really digest there. And of course, uh, this is also another episode episode of Boundary Break. We know this is the show where we take the camera everywhere we want and find our secrets in our most favorite games. I don't know, but yeah, there's a lot to go over. I can't really get into all of what I want to get into into right now because honestly i think some of that stuff i would probably get into would spoil some things and i don't want to get into that really right now because actually i do have a giant theory about the entirety of the mario series so you know in terms of like these stories because it really does give like a lot of room for thought so you know be on the lookout for that because i'll be doing that's another reason why to watch the let's play because i really do have a really crazy theory i want to get into but with that being said, guys, that's going to be the end of Super Mario Galaxy episode number four. If you guys like this video, like this video. All my social media links will be in the description down below. Subscribe if you guys also want to see more of this Let's Play. But with that being said, guys, Mario's going to go to sleep, take a nap. And uh, we'll see you guys in episode five where we'll be going to the bedroom. So thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone, for watching us. And as always, hasta.